Hello and welcome to Theatre Reviews with Paul Seven. I'm here at the Chichester Festival Theatre to see Assassins. Chichester Festival Theatre's reputation as a musicals producer is second to none, but its latest revival is, for me, a rare misstep. Keep watching and I'll tell you why. Uh, but first, may I just ask you, if you like my video reviews, please subscribe to this channel and you'll help it grow and you'll be the first to know about my future reviews. Stephen Sondheim's Assassins may not rank as one of his greatest works, but its reputation has grown uh, since its premiere in 1990. Uh, the musical, with the book by John Weidman, shows how the American dream that anyone can be a success has become a nightmare. Its bleak view is that celebrity has become a replacement for real achievement, and one shortcut to fame is assassinating a president. A string of would-be assassins follows the precedent set by John Wilkes Booth, who shot Abraham Lincoln, and leads ultimately to the traumatic loss of John Kennedy at the hands of Lee Harvey Oswald. But we gain little understanding of the individuals beyond their desire for fame for themselves and their cause. Well, if they have one. Not that there isn't much to enjoy along the way. The songs, for a start, which are mainly pastiches of various kinds of popular American music. Now, maybe they're not sometimes greatest tunes, but the use of popular music styles to talk about murder is chilling. Uh, there's the jaunty anthem, Everybody's Got the Right, uh, the right to their dream, that is, uh, that bookends the show. And Gun Song, a romantic love song to a killing weapon and something just broke, a hauntingly sad reaction to the death of Kennedy. The show originally used the device of a fairground shooting gallery in which contestants are given a gun and invited to take a shot at a president for the prize of fame if they succeed. And this serves well the concept of the randomness of success as a celebrity. And as each takes his or her shot, they sink into oblivion, forming a disappointed community until together they encourage Oswald to commit the assassination of a president who, by the mid-20th century, was seen as the leader of the free world. So, where did the Chichester production go wrong? Not with the performers, who are excellent. Uh, the characters, who are not really given great depth, are nevertheless given performances both vivid and amusing. Peter Forbes is suitably pompous and authoritative as the proprietor, or host. Danny Mack, with a strong singing voice, is the handsome and manipulative John Wilkes Booth, who you can believe would inspire the others. Harry Heppel is outstanding as the easygoing Charles Guiteau, who killed President Garfield because he believed he should have been made French ambassador. Sam Oladende is Leon Cholgosh, the shy, angry killer of President McKinley. Nick Holder as Samuel Bick wanders round the auditorium in a soiled Santa Claus outfit, ranting about President Nixon, and Leonard Bernstein for that matter, in a funny but frightening performance. Amy Booth Steele is Sarah Jane Moore, the would-be assassin of President Ford, whose inability to shoot straight gains the most laughs. And Samuel Thomas, impressive as Lee Harvey Oswald, a man so feeble in his resolve as to make you squirm in your seat at the arbitrary nature of Kennedy's death. For me, the problem was the way director Polly Findlay updated the concept to cover the modern cult of celebrity, starting with a reference to the recent celebrity president, Donald Trump. Uh, so the onstage band wear red baseball caps as the audience enter. And there are actors in animal mascot costumes encouraging Mexican waves. And the host looks very like Mr Trump. I think I can see what she's getting at here. I mean, Trump did seem to gain the presidency by the shortcut of celebrity. And there have been other recent examples of celebrities who seem to want to be their country's leader just for its own sake. But why is the president handing out the guns? I mean, I understand Trump encouraged the storming of the Capitol building, but this updating means you straight away lose that distinction between the people who achieve their dream of celebrity through assassinating a president and the presidents themselves who achieve their fame through a political career and a fairly democratic process. In support of this change of emphasis, Lizzie Clacken's wonderful set places the Oval Office uh, rather than the fairground 
in the centre. Giant video screens on either side show the choice of targets, turning the original shooting gallery theme into a game show, uh, suggesting perhaps the central place TV has these days in turning non-entities into household names. Three TV news reporters replace the single balladeer of previous productions to provide the commentary. And they hold their mics like guns, uh, indicating perhaps the media's contribution to the cult of celebrity killers. It's certainly a long way from the fairground. And when you have a musical that takes a meander through various would-be presidential assassins without going into any depth about each of them, and that is loosely held together by a concept that they are a corruption of the American dream, it really doesn't help to complicate matters by extending that idea to the to examine the modern-day cult of celebrity. The Watermill production of 2019 didn't stray from the fairground concept until the very end, and the death of Kennedy, and was, in my opinion, the better for that single focus. But still, a fabulous-looking production from Chichester Festival Theatre, beautifully performed, and a musical well worth reviving. I hope you found this review useful and hopefully enjoyable. If you did and you want to be the first to know about my future reviews, please subscribe to this channel. And if you want to read my reviews, go to theatre.reviews. And you can follow me on Twitter, Mastodon, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching.